Hi, I'm Jenny Bagus, Acting Assistant Secretary for Public Affairs here at HHS. Welcome to our second web chat on health reform. We at HHS are here to answer your questions as we begin to implement health reform. And today I'm joined by three of our department's top officials to discuss how health reform will help seniors. Some of the most important early benefits of the new health reform law go to older Americans, and we'll be discussing those today. But there's also been a great deal of misinformation out there, and today we hope to help you understand what's true and what's false. Earlier this week, we asked you to submit your questions about health reform's impact on senior citizens, and today we'll try to get to as many of those questions as we can. We'll also be taking questions live via Twitter, and our handle is at HHSGOV, at HHSGov. We will be holding these conversations regularly in the months ahead, so if we don't get to your question today, we'll make every effort to cover it next time. Keep in mind that we'll also be answering some of the most frequently asked questions each day on our website at healthreform.gov, so check it regularly to get the latest info. Joining me today to help distinguish fact from fiction is HHS Secretary Kathleen Sebelius, Assistant Hello. Secretary for Aging Kathy Hello. Greenlee, Hello. and Principal Deputy Administrator for the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services, Marilyn Tavner. So Secretary, Secretary Spitz, let's start with you. Really simple okay. question. What are the immediate benefits for seniors in this bill? Well, the good news for seniors is uh, that Congress and the President spent a lot of time and energy figuring out how we make sure we keep the promise made to Medicare beneficiaries 45 years ago. Uh, making sure Medicare is stronger in the future. So the uh, bill in and of itself, uh, over the course of the next 10 years, strengthens Medicare. It, it makes the trust fund more solvent. That's good news. Uh, there's help immediately and over the course of the bill for Medicare seniors to pay off prescription drug bills. Too many folks hit the so-called gap in coverage, the donut hole, and uh, they are going to receive a check this year to try and close that coverage gap. Um, Medicare will begin offering um, annual checkups, preventive care checkups uh, starting uh, next year. And there won't be any longer a copay, any financial barrier to get important screenings in preventive care. So there are important steps along the way uh, dealing with Medicare itself. And then there are other features of the bill aimed specifically at seniors that uh, some of our other friends are going to talk about the Elder Justice Act, the Class Act, areas that we've been missing for a long time in this country, but help uh, improve lives for seniors in America. Well, I know there's a lot of these things in there, and Kathy Greenlee is Assistant Secretary of Aging. You do a lot of outreach to different groups. What are some of the ways that the, that the Administration on Aging is going to go about educating seniors about all the stuff that's in this bill? We're very glad to be partnering with our friends at HHS uh, to reach out to seniors because there are 38 million seniors in this country and we want to make sure that we can do a couple of things. That we can explain to them sort of the broad provisions that we see that will impact them and then at the right time give them the right information. So when the changes are made to Medicare, CMS will be right there explaining those changes. So there will be a lot of coordination at the federal level. And we also have wonderful partners in the field. We work directly with the states with the area agencies on aging. All of us work with tribal organizations to get information, as well as the providers out there providing everything from meals to medical care. And so we will reach out and work with everyone to provide the right information at the right time to seniors. Well, so speaking of right information, there's one of the areas that we got a lot of questions about today and, and are out there is all these supposed cuts to Medicare. Marilyn Tavner, you're overseeing the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid. What's true and what's false? What's the deal with about well, Jenny, the Medicare cuts? I think it's important that individuals understand there are no cuts in Medicare. In fact, there are actual improvements. As the Secretary mentioned, there's preventive care that begins in 2011. This actually should strengthen the Medicare program, and the bill itself actually extends the trust fund. All good things for Medicare population. We talked about a couple of the benefits, and maybe I'll start with you, Marilyn, and you, Secretary. What are some steps that seniors should be taking to take advantage of some of the things that were described, we, the donut hole check, some of the, the provisions that you're talking about? Marilyn, I know CMS is in, in charge of some of this. Yes, yeah, so let's talk about the donut hole first. Many seniors, uh, their drug costs exceed what their coverage and so they're having to pay some of that so beginning in June we will start a process of when you reach the donut hole there will be a two hundred and fifty dollar check that would be issued to the senior 
that will be something that comes automatically. There is no need to contact us. You should not be contacted by outside vendors. This will be a straight contact between CMS and the individual receiving the check. And that is a rolling uh, enrollment. So if you don't reach your donut hole until October or November, then you would receive the check after that time. And we'll have more information on that on the website too. This actually brings up a point that Kathy, I'll go to you and then the secretary because she spoke about it this week at the press club. We got a report from something called the Senior Medicare Patrol yes. about some of the scams that are happening out there. Can you talk a little bit about that program and what you guys heard? Yes, if I could start and say some things have not changed. And one of the best pieces of advice we've always given seniors is to be careful with your Medicare card. Be careful who gets that information and always give it to a trusted source. And the reason for that is very apparent right now. Uh, we got reports through a program of ours in Missouri uh, that someone had gone door to door at a senior living complex misrepresenting that they were from the federal government, trying to obtain Medicare information from a senior for bad purposes. This was a scam artist. Uh, fortunately, we were able to, to find out about that and, and report that so that we can have local um, law enforcement intervene. Uh, but the good news is that seniors should always have known that this is not something that, uh, that they should trust and they should check it out. The program that we have is called Senior Medicare Patrol, and we train across the country 5,000 volunteers to go out and help seniors learn how to read their benefits, how Medicare works, because seniors don't want to be victim to scams. They don't want someone to steal that information, and they're the best advocates that we have for themselves to give them the good information and stop these kind of artists. Uh, seniors should know that the federal government doesn't sell insurance door to door. They never have. That's not part of this program, so they should be very leery when someone poses as that. You've been working on fraud for a long time. And fraud and abuse. You talked about it this week. What else is in this bill and in your sort of strategy to address this? Well, President Obama said from the outset, we really have to go after thieves who are stealing uh, our Medicare dollars, stealing from the beneficiaries, stealing from the next generation of beneficiaries. Uh, we know it goes on and we have to crack down on it. So he asked the Attorney General and me to work together uh, as two cabinet secretaries to really um, be much more aggressive going after the crooks. And we've done just that. We now have uh, police and investigators in seven cities around the country where there has been evidence that high fraud has occurred. We hope to expand that to uh, 11 more cities over the course of the next year. Uh, real boots on the ground going after folks who are selling phony equipment, stealing Medicare cards, signing people up for benefits that don't exist, uh, trying to really rip off the Medicare trust fund. So going after fraud and abuse and making sure those dollars stay safe and secure is part of the effort. We just had a huge historic um, settlement case with a major drug company who was misrepresenting, uh, mismarketing the drug. And uh, once the uh, lawsuit was settled. Over $2 billion was returned to the Medicare Trust Fund for the money that actually had been spent buying the drug for purposes that were, in fact, potentially dangerous to folks. So we're looking at the whole array of people who steal, people who abuse the system, providers who are not on the up and up, um, equipment providers who are not providing real services to seniors, and we really want to get much tougher, much more aggressive, and keep that money going to the Medicare beneficiaries where it belongs. And I know actually just for the viewers, we have a website which links off health reform. It links off the CMS page. It links off all of our pages. It's called stopmedicarefraud.gov. There's good information there that you can download for your parents if you're a caregiver to teach them about some of the stuff that you were all just talking about. Okay, now we're going to go to viewer questions, which is the best part of the show. Um, and we are going to take as many of your questions in as we can. We've received, again, um, 600, 700 questions in advance of this web chat, which is a great sign that people are watching. We sorted them into categories, and we want to try to cover as much ground as possible in the short time that we have. So I may paraphrase your question a little bit when I read it, um, but let's go right to the questions. Um, I think, Marilyn, this first question may be for you. Um, Sherry from North Carolina. My husband, who was aged 59, was forced into early retirement due to a layoff. His firm has never offered health insurance to retirees. Is there anything in the health care bill for them? And right now, the only work that he can find is on contract, and that doesn't have any benefits. Thank you, Jenny. Sherry, um, it's important that we talk to you about this type of program. We have what's called a high-risk pool 
that will be available for individuals. There's also an early retiree insurance pool that comes about this summer. So there are more than one opportunity so for your husband and you to have coverage under the bill that was not available to you before. Anything else you guys have? Well, Jenny, I would, I would say that Marilyn is talking about, I think, the sort of bridge strategy. Uh, what will be available starting in 2014 in every market in the country is a new insurance pool. Uh, what happens too often to 59-year-olds is that insurance companies just decide they don't want to uh, take their coverage, write their policy, or they charge four, five, six, seven times as much to an older uh, insurance beneficiary as they do to somebody who's younger. Those rules will change. Companies will uh, have to write policies that don't have that kind of huge age differential. But also, we're going to put retire early retirees, um, uh, single workers, uh, entrepreneurs, small business owners in much bigger pools. So they'll have some negotiating power. They'll have the same kind of power that uh, Fortune 500 companies have, that members of Congress have, in bigger pools with a plan that uh, will have to provide them coverage. They'll have some choices and some options uh, going forward. So Maryland's described kind of the bridge strategy of some programs that are uh, relatively temporary over the next couple of years to provide coverage, but then we will have a new marketplace. I think that's an important thing for people to remember as we discuss this. This bill just doesn't go into effect right. overnight. It's a it's a stepping stone to get there. Yeah. Um, well, again, about this is about how the law goes into effect. And I'm, Marilyn, I'm going to start with you again here. Not all the questions are going to go to Marilyn. Don't worry. Um, but this is Leonard from California. How will the new health care law affect those of us under 65 but who are disabled and and still on Medicare? Um, is there anything that is different for us rather than people who are on Medicare for being old, so people who are disabled? How does the new law impact them? Well, first of all, if you're on Medicare, nothing will change for you. You will continue with your Medicare benefits, and I think that's very important to understand because many people are confused that their current Medicare benefit may change, so it will not change. Uh, in fact, there are some strengthening uh, provisions in the bill, such as we discussed earlier about preventive care beginning next year, where there will be no copay or no deductible for you. There are also some quality programs uh, for people with chronic disease or disability, where we'll be able to do more in-home care, more coordinated care programs. So it should strengthen it. You should see improvements as time goes on. It will not take away your current benefit. Maybe for all three of you, uh, one issue that's of a big importance to seniors is their retiree drug plans. Um, David from Pennsylvania wants to know what's going to happen to retiree drug plans. Will they be fully protected in the new health reform law? Absolutely. Um, uh, the government will continue to provide a tax break to companies for offering retiree drug plans. We'll still pay a portion of it. Uh, we think it's a great idea if employers help stabilize retiree marketplace. That's why it was in the uh, put in the first place. The only change, and it is a change that was made by Congress, is that um, employers, uh, we've kind of closed a loophole where employers uh, now can receive a subsidy from, from the government. Uh, that will go on. What they can't do is take a tax deduction on that subsidy. It isn't their money in the first place. Uh, they were previously allowed to deduct not only their own contribution, but the government's contribution. And Congress said probably shouldn't happen. It's taxpayer money in the first place, uh, so we didn't want to double, double deduct it. But the government will still pay a share. Employers will still be encouraged to keep that in place and still have a subsidy. Anything else? Or that's, I think that's a pretty good answer. Um, Jan from Illinois. I will be 64 on Friday, so happy early birthday. Um, plan to be continuing and plan to continue to work until June 2011. I have pre-existing conditions. Uh, I'm going to say pulmonary fibrosis, and then another thing that if I say, I, probably no one will know what I said. But she uses oxygen on a daily basis. I'm afraid I won't be able to get supplemental insurance or won't be able to afford it when I retire. Will health reform help me, or do I have to wait till 2014? Yeah, she just has to wait till she turns 65. I mean, she uh, is worried about when she retires in a year, 
that she will get Medicare, which is a good thing, and how can she get additional supplemental, used to be called Medigap insurance. Uh, Medigap insurance is something that she should shop for as soon as she turns 65, because the older you get, uh, the more expensive it can be. You don't want to buy it when you're 90. Uh, buy it when you're 65, and it's a guaranteed issue for her, so she shouldn't have a problem. Uh, with her medical conditions, but she needs to make the decision early. And there are people in the country who can help her with that. Uh, we have, uh, through 1-800-MEDICARE, Medicare.gov, an entire network of people around the country who specialize in helping people just like her figure that out. Uh, but the important time for her to shop is when she turns 65. It's a special time uh, with regard to her insurance. Great. Right. She'll clearly be 65 before she plans to retire. So there would be no gap. She's, it sounds like she's on employer coverage right now. If she doesn't retire till June 2011, she will have had her 65th birthday before she retires. So there should be absolutely no gap that she has to worry about. But the other important point I think you did say is that a lot, we're getting very specific questions, which is great. I mean, we want to be here as a resource, but Medicare, um, the Administration on Aging, HHS, we're all looking to get more resources so that you can get help navigating this. And Marilyn, do you want to just talk a little bit about your call number? And, and I know you're getting some new improvements to the website coming we up are. soon. Uh, first of all, I think many of the readers may be, from, or the viewers may be familiar, but it's 1-800-MEDICARE. Last year, we received more than 26 million calls on this number, and there, it's a number that's available throughout the United States. Anyone can call the number, and we will try to answer anything from your simple questions to the most complicated questions and get you help, and we try to do that in a single call. Then there's also a website that we've recently improved, Medicare.gov, that has a lot of new additional information that's user friendly so whether you are the person on Medicare or maybe you're a caregiver for someone on Medicare we encourage you to use the website and the and the phone number. In fact we made the secretary demo it we're gonna roll it's a great website. Jenny it's if really... I could, could jump in for the last several years with the Medicare prescription drug benefit seniors have gone through an open enrollment period and many many seniors and their family members find someone in the senior health insurance program to call for help those are the same people who will have good information for them now with regard to health reform. That's a broad network of area agencies and other local community providers. Those are the people that we're working with that we mentioned earlier in the broadcast. That's where seniors should call, the same place they've always gone for, for trusted information. Okay. You just talked about the Medicare Advantage and the open enrollment, and AA has a question. I am covered by a Medicare HMO, which has served my health very well. Will I be able to maintain the same coverage that I have once health reform is implemented? Absolutely. Uh, this is a very important question because unfortunately there has been a lot of misinformation about the so-called Medicare Advantage plans. S seniors have a choice when they turn 65 and beyond to either enroll in the traditional Medicare plan or enroll in a Medicare HMO, a Medicare Advantage plan. Um, there are many parts of the country where there are three or four choices. We have over 200 plans in the marketplace right now, uh, companies in the market, over 1,400 plans uh, chosen by seniors. Nothing in that um, scheme will change. Uh, Medicare Advantage plans will continue to offer services to Medicare beneficiaries. Companies right now choose each year whether to continue in the market or get out of the market. So there may be some plans who drop out next year or the following year, but it's not because anybody at the federal government level or the bill ordered them out. It's because the company has decided to make a change. We want current beneficiaries, future beneficiaries to understand that uh, one of the things over time that will happen is the overpayment to the insurance company uh, will gradually decrease. So the payment will look more like Medicare fee for service. But Medicare Advantage will continue to be a choice. It's a solid choice for about 11 million Americans. We want to make sure they have that choice into the future. I just want to repeat something you said because it, it's not that when you hear about cuts to Medicare Advantage, it's not to the benefits or the things That's that seniors correct. are receiving. It's to the companies because there's been a discrepancy. Well, insurance companies right now get paid 14 to 15 percent more to offer the same kind of benefits that uh, the government gets paid basically to provide the fee-for-service Medicare. About 80 percent of Americans are in fee-for-service, about 20 percent are in some kind of Medicare Advantage plan. What Congress said is over time 
we gradually want to reduce that subsidy to insurance companies. We want the plans to stay. We want them to compete. We think a lot of seniors uh, want to make a choice, want some competition in the marketplace. That's great. Uh, next year, there will be absolutely no cut uh, in Medicare Advantage plan. We've already told them that. The payment will be exactly the same as it is this year. So Medicare Advantage plans will be part of the future. We think they're a solid choice. We just want to make sure seniors are getting the bang for their buck. Great. Anything else on that? All right. I'm going to go to a Twitter question, which is actually a great question. Can you define the donut hole? Marilyn. The donut hole is an expression that we use. Currently, um, there is coverage of prescription drugs up to a certain amount. Beyond that, then the individual Medicare recipient starts to pay out of their pocket. We call that the donut hole. And what happens this year under the new law is that when you reach that certain amount where you've paid a certain amount out of your pocket, then you will receive a $250 rebate check. And that will occur at what time you've exceeded um, the expenses. That donut hole, as it's described, will start to change next year and will eventually be gone by 2020. It will reduce a little bit over time over the next 10 years. So the donut hole, as we know it, will go away, and that will be covered through your, your regular insurance coverage. Well, it seems like the donut hole is a hot Twitter topic <laughs> because we have another one. I think you explained this before, but it's probably not bad to repeat it. How will the $250 benefit towards coverage gap costs be received by beneficiaries? What's the eligibility? The eligibility has to do with a certain dollar threshold. And so once you've paid a certain expenditure out of pocket, then you are eligible for what is called the donut hole rebate. And that check will be um, written to you. It will come from, from Medicare, from CMS. It's not anything you have to apply for. There's not an application process. We will monitor the expenses and we will send you the check once you qualify. But you don't have to give your Social Security number. You don't have to no. do anything. And there You'll shouldn't send be, it out. should not be any private uh, company contacting you about this. It would only be through your, tr your regular Medicare routes. Okay. Um, Tom and Janet had a question. I think you answered the first part of it, which was how will the new health reform bill affect seniors and their HMOs. But they then say, we also understand that the state of Florida will be exempt from the above mentioned, will be exempt from the changes in Medicare Advantage. Is this true? We're afraid of losing our doctor. Well, again, um, I think what happened is the bills went through Congress. A lot of the good ideas about one state were actually brought into a lot of states. So there aren't a lot of states, Florida-specific, Nebraska-specific issues, but they have really been extended uh, to the country. Again, Medicare Advantage plans will continue to function the way they do now in the marketplace. Uh, seniors will continue to have Medicare Advantage plans as a choice. Fee-for-service is one choice. Medicare Advantage plans are another choice. That will continue on into the future. What we have just done is tell companies that for calendar year 2011, uh, we're not even halfway through 2010, but for calendar year 2011, there will be no cuts by the federal government to the Medicare Advantage plan. So they know already what their uh, payments will be, what their package will be. They need to come back to us as the year progresses in terms of what benefits they intend to offer, what their uh, mailings will be to their senior, and then there'll be another open enrollment period later this fall. But Medicare Advantage plans in Florida and elsewhere will continue to operate very much the way they have in the past. And there shouldn't be any change in providers. Providers will be uh, compensated the same way unless the company somehow, the company's not going to get a cut, so hopefully the company won't impose any additional cuts on doctors. Okay. Eula has, has uh, sent us a note. She, Eula is 60, and she is retired on Social Security disability. Eula says, I cannot get Medicare until I'm 62. I do not have health coverage. I cannot get health coverage because of a pre-existing condition. When, where, and how do I get a piece of this new health care plan? <laughs> well, Eula, you are one of the Americans that certainly was on the mind of the president and Congress putting together this new strategy. Unfortunately, everything won't hit overnight, but um, we just sent a letter to governors in states around the country to set up 
a high risk pool uh, for adults with pre existing conditions so that there will be some immediate help in the marketplace. The premiums will be capped. Uh, and there will be an opportunity. Uh, too many insurance companies right now say we don't want anybody with a pre-existing condition. We're not going to write the policy at all, or we're going to charge 400 percent higher than anybody else in the market. That will stop this year. There will be a high-risk plan available. In 2014, there will be a new market uh, that will uh, prevent insurance companies from eliminating anyone with pre-existing conditions and put people in much larger pools. But it's sort of a step-by-step -step process to get there because we want to make sure the new markets run correctly, that we get them set up well, that we work with states to do that. So we got a high-risk pool as the bridge and then a new market at least by 2014. We only have about three minutes left, but there's a couple good ones here I want to get to. We talk, I think you mentioned this earlier, Secretary, but maybe, Marilyn, you can talk a little bit more in detail. Sal says, will Medicare cover yearly physicals? If so, when? And he, and he or she, I don't know. It is ironic with all this talk this year about preventative medicine that Medicare has never covered any of these services. <laughs> well, I think Sal makes a very good point. Uh, beginning in 2011, we will cover uh, preventive care, routine physicals, and there will not be a copay or deductible. Depending on the type of Medicare plan that folks have today, it, particularly if they're in one of the Medicare Advantage plans, they may have some of these services now. But we will extend that service to all types of Medicare plans. And so if you are in need of preventive care, you can access, you can go to your physician. You do not have to worry about a copay or a deductible. And that begins in 2011. And we think that's a very good thing. We're about preventive care and getting in front of the illness. We think that's important. You've been doing a lot of work on that at the Administration on Aging. I mean, prevention and sort of getting ahead of it. I know you've been out talking to a lot of folks. Do, do you have anything you want to add well, we, to that? We have um, some programs around the country that we can put in local community organizations, the basement of a church, at the YWCA, to help seniors manage their own chronic conditions. So this is a very nice partnership that we can work with our partners at CMS for the preventative benefits. But if you have a condition and you're struggling uh, to care for yourself or you're taking care of someone else, we can help you learn how to manage that condition so that you have a better quality of life and fewer episodes where you need to access uh, the emergency room or the hospital. I'd say the other piece of that, and, and Kathy just mentioned the hospital, is uh, working part of the plan will be to work more closely with hospitals if someone had to um, access hospital care if they go in the hospital. What we want to do is when they get released from the hospital is keep them healthier. One out of every five Medicare beneficiaries right now go back into the hospital within 30 days. Some of that is unavoidable. Some people have a health crisis or an emergency. A lot of people just haven't been seen by a doctor or haven't had anybody follow up on are they taking their meds, helping to manage. So again, part of the Affordable Care Act is to make sure that we follow up on folks, that they get some help and treatment once they leave the hospital to stay out of the hospital to be healthier. If I could jump. Some of these opportunities we have known were good ideas. And what we have the ability to do now is provide them to everyone, to get to everybody who needs the help, uh, so we can bring out things that we know already work and make them better for everyone. Well, we're going to take one more tweet, and then we're going to wrap <laughs> it up. Marilyn said, you said that... <coughs> Excuse me. Beneficiaries will I should have done it like that. Um, will automatically receive a two hundred and fifty dollar check on a rolling basis when they reach the gap. What if they've already reached it? If they've already reached it, then we hope to issue those first uh, checks or payments in June. So they should look to receive their check in the June time frame. Okay. Well, I think we're going to wrap up. Um, I just want to say thank you all for joining us. That's all the time that we have. Our guests, Kathleen Sebelius, Secretary of HHS. Kathy Greenlee, our Assistant Secretary on Aging, and Marilyn Tavner, the Principal Deputy Administrator of CMS. We hope you got some of your questions answered today, and we'll be making, during the webcast, and we'll be making it available on demand shortly. And soon afterwards, it will be available as an archived webcast, which means you can watch it any time when you're up late at night doing, watching TV, knitting, I don't know, whatever. You can get it any time of day. Um, you can also find it on www.healthreform.gov. And please keep looking at the site. It's truly a resource for you. It will link off to the great programs from the folks that were here today. 
Thanks a lot. I'm Jenny Backus, and we'll see you next week.